Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. I bought my three sons cordless tools for Christmas this year. And when it comes to cordless tools, they're all pretty good and they'll all get the job done, some better than others. I've always leaned towards the big three, that being Makita, Milwaukee, and DeWalt. And I ended up going with Makita for a few reasons. Number one was it was just a really good deal. This was one of those Black Friday Home Depot deals. And for $255, I picked up the drill driver combo kit that comes with two 4 amp hour 18 volt batteries, the charger, and the choice of a third tool, but tool only. And that's often described with cordless tools as tool only because the batteries are very expensive. There are a few other tools to choose from. I went with the six and a half inch circular saw because you can really get a lot done with these three tools. And of course, the batteries are interchangeable. Now the big thing to consider when you're buying your first cordless tools is what other tools are going to be on that battery platform. So the other big reason for choosing Makita is I really like the Makita cordless track saw, the fact that they have a cordless biscuit joiner and a cordless handheld router. So now let's go ahead, I'll show you everything that came in the box. We'll charge up the batteries, drill some holes, and drive some screws. Here's everything in the bag. This is the drill, and this has a hammer setting, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Here's the driver, two batteries, clips. You're gonna to wanna to put these on, and I'll show you how to do that, so you can hang your drill and driver from your belt hook or your pocket, your charger, and your bag. First, let's take a quick look at the batteries. Here's your battery indication light. This has a full charge. I just charged it up. This one needs a charge. And to charge the battery, this slides up. So this, don't try to take this piece off. Your battery just simply slides in. Now one of the downsides of the Makita charging is the sound. It has a fan in here. My Milwaukee doesn't. And it may not bother you, but if you're shooting video, the sound of the fan is kind of annoying. Another downside of the Makita charging station is there's no way to hang this on the wall. Most chargers have a little key in the back, and I'll show you what my, my uh, Milwaukee has here. You've got the little hanging situation, so you can put a screw into a piece of plywood on your wall and hang the charger right on the wall. So that's definitely kind of a downside about the charger, but that could also easily be fixed. To get the battery out of the charger, you need to press the button and pull it out. A clip and a screw is provided for each gun. I always hang the clip on, I guess this would be the left side of the gun because I'm righty. And you might even want to use a little Loctite. This is a Phillips head screw. Screw this in tight. The reason why I suggest Loctite is you don't want it to uh, come loose on you on a job site and then lose the clip. To put the battery in the drill, you're just going to slide it and you'll hear it click in place. To remove the battery, you have to press this white button. You can see how easily that hangs right on my pant here. Now if I put the clamp this way, or the clip this way, then the drill would be hanging with the drill bit facing out, and I'd rather have it pointing to the back of me. The drill has two speeds, one being slow, two being fast. Now it's also variable speed, so the lighter I pull the trigger, the slower the chuck will spin, so you can see I'll just Kind of ease it on like that. And same thing if you're in one. I generally keep the drill in two. This is also a hammer drill, and right now it's in the hammer setting, and that's meant for drilling into masonry, and we'll get into that in a little bit. This is for driving screws. I almost never use a drill for driving screws, but back in the day, this is what you would use. If you are going to drive screws, you can use the clutch settings. Number one being the lightest, so I can hold the, the chuck here and pull the trigger and you'll see that I can keep the chuck from moving. Right? 
So now if I go all the way up to 21, there's going to be more resistance. I can still stop it, but it, it takes more resistance. Generally, I keep the drill in the drill setting. Now to loosen the chuck, you can see how it's tight here. Put it in reverse, and that opens up the chuck so you can get a drill bit into the drill. This drill has a keyless chuck, so to close the chuck, I'll put the drill in forward, hold the chuck with my hand, and lightly pull the trigger. To open the chuck, I'll hold the chuck with my hand again, put the drill in reverse, and lightly press the trigger. For the most part in the shop here, I use a pre-drill and countersink bit in the drill. To put the drill bit in the drill, I'm holding the chuck with my hand. The drill is in forward and I'll lightly pull the trigger. And now that's tight. A pre-drill and countersink bit will drill a small hole, also known as a pilot hole, and then a larger hole to countersink the head of the screw. To change drill bits, I'll put the drill in reverse, hold the chuck, and lightly press the trigger. I'll open up the chuck a little bit more, since this is a bigger drill bit. Put the drill bit in the chuck, and again, holding the chuck, lightly press the trigger. Another drill bit I like to use here in the shop is a Brad Point drill bit. This is a very sharp bit, and it will drill a hole very fast. Now, you probably don't want to just start drilling the hole like this because there's a lot of torque here and it can really twist your wrist. So often I'll brace the drill with my body and that just gives me a little control as I'm drilling the hole. Now next we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the masonry bit and drilling into this brick here. I did want to mention though that sometimes I will drill larger holes with the drill in the screwdriver setting and I'll use the clutch. That Sometimes that will protect you and just give you a little bit more control when you're drilling a wide diameter hole because the wider the hole the more likely this drill will kind of turn and uh, I've hurt my wrist a few times, nothing serious but enough to know that I don't want to do it again. So let's go ahead, we'll take a closer look at this masonry bit, and then we'll drill a hole in the brick. Here's a look at the masonry bit. You can see it's just kind of like a regular drill bit with a head at the top of it, almost like a chisel at the top of the drill bit. Here's your regular drill bit. This will drill through metal, plastic, and wood, where this one is designed for specifically drilling into masonry. And when you drill with this bit, you'll use your drill on the hammer setting. And what that will do is spin the bit and hammer at the same time. I've got the drill in the hammer setting and you'll notice that the drill is louder. Okay, so that's about all there is to using a drill. Definitely take your time, get comfortable with the tool. Uh, the whole idea is to always take your time with every tool or go slow. Anyway, I'm gonna take the battery out of this one because I haven't charged the other one yet. Again, I just pressed the white button. This is now the driver. A driver is an amazing tool because you can really drive screws easily. It's not going to torque your wrist. And for the most part, I use screws now with star driver heads. And the, the bit simply fits into the impact driver by pulling the collar forward and sliding the bit into place. It's spring loaded, so the collar will slide back and now the bit is locked in place. Here I have a three inch screw and you'll see how easy this driver drives the screw. Again, it is variable speed, so I can drive it slower if I want to.
that's about all there is to it when you're using a driver and drill. The main thing is to take some time and get used to the tools. I would grab an old 2x4, drive a bunch of screws in it, forward and reverse, just kind of get the feel of how that ratchet in the driver works because you don't want to drive a screw too far. You want to, it's just kind of a feel thing. You'll just kind of build up a sense of, of what is the right depth and what's the right amount of pressure. Same thing with a drill. Go out and just drill a bunch of holes in a piece of scrap wood. Get comfortable drilling holes. You don't want your first hole to be on an important project. Now, as far as the circular saw is, is concerned, I'll be happy to shoot a separate video on just some of the basics of using a circular saw. Really one of the most versatile tools. It's amazing what you can do with these three tools. This, the drill driver, circular saw combination, you're pretty much unstoppable, especially if you're talking about just getting things done around the house. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.